by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Good morning to you. There's a major new development in the Russia investigation by Robert Mueller. Roger Stone, a former advisor to President Trump, has been arrested. What he's being charged with, that's coming up. And here in Montana, see how residents and people from out of state are pitching in to help Yellowstone National Park workers who are suffering because of the government shutdown. Good morning to you. Welcome to your Friday. We start with some breaking news right now. Longtime advisor to President Trump, Roger, Roger Stone, has been arrested this morning in Florida. Yeah, he was indicted as part of the Mueller investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election. CBS's Mark Liverman has the latest. Trump ally Roger Stone was arrested in Florida this morning as part of the Russia investigation. Special counsel Robert Mueller released a statement announcing the arrest after Stone was indicted by a federal grand jury. He's been charged with seven counts, one count of obstruction of an official proceeding, five counts of false statements, and one count of witness tampering. Well, I think I might be framed. It's possible that I'll be railroaded. Last month, he denied any wrongdoing. I sleep well at night knowing one thing. I've committed no crimes in connection with the 2016 election. Part of the 24-page document says that Stone was contacted by senior Trump campaign officials to inquire about future releases by Organization One, which appears to be WikiLeaks. The indictment also said Stone made deliberately false and misleading statements to the House Intelligence Committee. Stone is scheduled to make an initial court appearance in Fort Lauderdale today. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Uh, also, Stone has acknowledged uh, exchanging messages during the 2016 campaign with Guccifer 2.0. Now, that's a Twitter handle that the U.S. intelligence officials say was used by Russians who conspired to hack Democratic emails. Staying in politics, day 34 of the partial government shutdown and federal workers in Yellowstone National Park are feeling the strain. MTN's John Shearer reports that help is coming in, but it may not be enough. Working for the park is a mainstay here in Gardner. Mammoth Park Headquarters is just up the hill from here. That means a high percentage of people in this town are affected by the federal government shutdown. Our community is hurting, and when even one of our community hurts, especially because of outside forces, we're all hurting. James Halfpenny, Katie Wilkinson, and Jenny Burr are just three of many people who stepped up to help their friends. We wanted to have something available to employees who might not feel comfortable for whatever reason uh, coming into a food pantry. So the two women organized a community table of sorts in the Mammoth Community Center. Commodities, even some fresh food is available to pick up. And right now at the local Conoco, people can go in and get gas cards. The Gardner Market is extending accounts to park workers, and there's even help for people working deep in the interior of the park. I've got a good working relationship with a lot of them where I felt like I could um, ask some of the hard questions about how they really were doing. And I did start to get um, some feedback where um, there was a need. But the logistics of getting help to those extremely remote areas is tough. You do snowmobile in and out of those places. It's very weather dependent. Um, and those are long trips to make by yourself on a snowmobile. Wilkinson knows. She used to live in the interior. Now, the women are getting supplies in with the help of over snow delivery trucks. Halfpenny reached out to his fellow researchers. All over the United States, literally. He hoped to raise a few hundred dollars. Instead, he got thousands. Uh, the response mostly from people is thank you for doing this. Uh, our federal workers need the help. It's not just money. Not working at a job most dearly love is disheartening. They were having such a hard time coming to terms with not being um, not being able to go to work to do the job that they love. And what happens as the federal shutdown drags on? Well, many people here tell me it just gets harder every day. In Gardner, just outside Yellowstone National Park, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. Now, John tells us the money being collected is also helping park workers pay monthly bills. And if there is any money left over at the end of the shutdown, the remaining money will be given to the Gardner Food Pantry. And Bozeman's Museum of the Rockies is offering free admission for furloughed government workers during the federal government shutdown. Admission will be waived for all furloughed federal workers and up to four family members. 
Now, if they would like to enjoy the exhibits and planetarium that the museum has de to offer, Director of Marketing Alicia Thompson says this is an opportunity for the museum to give back during tough financial times. We are a nonprofit and we survive on the, the generosity of sponsors, donors, patrons, members and visitors to support what we do here at Museum of the Rockies and we just felt it was our turn to give back. Also, Montana State men's basketball is also offering free tickets for furloughed federal workers during Saturday's game. Nice job, community. That's really yep. cool. That's good stuff. It's really cool. I love it. uh, something that's really cooler, our weather right now. Uh, temperature's a little cold, uh, <laughs> for sure. Temperature's sitting Really cooler. Into, yeah. <laughs> you didn't believe me. Yep. Glad you guys are here. Uh, <laughs> temperatures into the teens, single digits for much of the area. There may be some ice on a few of the area roadways, and we are expecting light to moderate snow at times through the daytime hours, especially uh, looking east of the divide. West of the divide has the potential of some light snow coming a little earlier in the day. I do have some concerns about the evening commute for a few areas. We'll, of course, break that all down from the Billion Auto Weather patio in just a few minutes. Cool. Cooler. 6.35 now, our top uh, local story this half hour. A Butte woman pleaded guilty yesterday in district court to shooting at a bouncer in Butte Bar back in 2017. Court records show 32-year-old Sarah Baldwin uh, pleaded guilty to felony counts of assault with a weapon and criminal endangerment. Baldwin was arrested in November of 2017 after she fired a handgun at a bouncer in a via coma lounge after he told her to leave the bar. The shot was so close that it went through the victim's shirt but did not strike him. Baldwin is free on bond. Also, another prominent Republican has announced that he's running for governor in 2020. That's State Attorney General Tim Fox. Fox launched his campaign with an interview with MTN News early Thursday morning. Fox has been Attorney General since 2013 and was re-elected to a second term and final term in 2016. Earlier this month, Republican Secretary of State Corey Stapleton said he is running for governor in 2020. And sources have told MTN News that Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte is giving the race a look as well. The governor's seat will be open because term limits prevent Democrat Steve Bullock from running again. I think being an effective leader is more than just standing in front of a microphone and a camera and yelling. It's about bringing people together. It's about finding solutions to real world, world problems. Those are things that I think that I've been able to epitomize in the last six years. Republicans need to win the governor's office. It's been a, a drought that's gone on too long, uh, and I'm the guy that can do that. Uh, so far, by the way, no Democratic candidates have announced running for that office. We're going to shift it up here just a little bit. Despite the ongoing partial government shutdown, the Internal Revenue Service will begin processing tax returns this coming Monday. But before you file, we have some heads up on some of the tax-related scams already going around. MTN's Jacob Fewer has our details in this week's Fraud Watch. The most common tax scam this year isn't new. It's actually one that's been going around for a while. Someone calls saying that they're an agent from the IRS. And what that entails typically is someone picks up the phone and this agent says that, they, that this, the person on the phone, the victim, owes back taxes. This call should sound alarm bells for wise consumers immediately. For one, the IRS won't use a phone call to reach out to you first. Any communication will originate in the mail. Even if one day they did need to call you, they'll always give you a chance to appeal what you owe. Second, these calls often have a sense of urgency, even saying you could go to jail if you don't settle up. And that leads to the third big red flag, payment. Like many scams, the perpetrators want you to pay with largely untraceable methods, including gift cards and wire transfers. And don't forget, there's a wealth of information on your W-2, and scammers know it. They can use the info to file your tax return. Maybe they're looking to steal your social security number, file taxes on your behalf, and actually claim your return. One of the best ways to avoid that, file your taxes early. It gives scammers less of a chance to steal your information, file that return, and you end up with a huge headache if your identity is stolen and someone else files taxes on your behalf. In Helena, Jacob Fuhrer, MTN News. The Better Business Bureau encourages consumers to report any scam related to their online scam tracking portal. We have those links for you on our website. Good advice, mm -hmm. for sure. Always. Well, and of course, it's tax time, and there's a lot of weird paperwork, and you don't know what's what, so. Right. And they're not calling you. No, they're, they're not, not calling you. They're not going to call you. Stay with us. It's a quick break here on your Friday morning. In a moment, an instrument that could save your life. And there's only a few of them in the world, 
and Montana has one of them. We head up to Flathead County in just a moment. But first we head to New York. We'll check in with Gail King, see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning to you ahead on CBS This Morning. 800,000 federal workers are missing their second paychecks today as a government shutdown hits the five-week mark. We'll visit one of the pop-up kitchens being set up to help feed the furloughed employees. And we're taking a closer look at members of the powerful family that one attorney general says fueled the opioid epidemic. We'll see you at 7 o'clock on The Dot.